This is Business Class on Your Money. Hi, I'm James Wilkinson and welcome to Business Class. Today's show is coming to you from Fort Worth in Texas. Before we showcase some great things this city has to offer, here's this week's travel news. In travel news this week, Virgin Australia has launched new services across the Tasman following the ending of the airline's partnership with Air New Zealand. Virgin Australia's new Sydney to Wellington flight took off last Sunday and a day later the first Melbourne to Queenstown service was inaugurated. On top of this, the airline has also added extra services across several of their key Australia to Auckland routes and launched a seasonal service between Newcastle and Auckland. Additionally, from this week, all Virgin Australia airfares between Australia and New Zealand now include a meal, a drink, up to 23 kilos check baggage and access to in-flight Wi-Fi. As Virgin Australia continues to expand its travel offering for guests visiting New Zealand, the airline has also recently announced the launch of a new international lounge network in Australia and New Zealand. Seven international lounges are currently being rolled out across the network. Virgin Australia's General Manager of Network, Russell Shaw, talks about the new offerings. Well, we're delighted to be launching three new services direct across the Tasman, Sydney, Wellington, Melbourne, Queenstown, and a seasonal Auckland, Newcastle service to go with additional frequencies into our key Auckland markets like Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. Well, New Zealand is our closest international destination. There are more than 1.5 million Australians going to New Zealand every year, and it just has a fantastic, diverse landscape, great activities uh, to enjoy, as well as great food and wine. This will be adding 40,000 seats into the market every year uh, going forward from the start of November. Well, this really allows us to provide a better network for both our Australian and our New Zealand guests, giving greater access across our domestic Australia and, and short-haul international ports, as well as just making sure they can enjoy the unique Virgin Australia service. Well, for Melbourne Queenstown, we will be the only carrier offering business class on each and every flight between Melbourne and Queenstown. For Auckland Newcastle, we are the only carrier flying the market three times a week. And in terms of onboard products, we are the only carrier on each and every flight to have in-flight entertainment and internet connectivity. For the new services, Sydney to Wellington is five times per week. Melbourne to Queenstown starts at three times per week, but grows to five during the peak Christmas, New Year and skiing seasons. And Auckland, Newcastle is a seasonal service starting at the end of November. So with these services, we're really delighted to be offering an expanded network and greater opportunities for Australians and New Zealanders to see each other's country with a consistent onboard offering and with our terrific cabin crew. We fly where our customers want to fly, and we're delighted to be offering our brand new, unique Virgin Australia services to these markets. We've got new lounges opening in Australia across Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney in conjunction with number one lounges and in New Zealand we'll be opening new lounges in Wellington, Queenstown, Christchurch and in Auckland. In these lounges we're going to have a great ar array of facilities for guests to enjoy from comfortable seating to uh, an all day bar which will include fresh juices, smoothies, cocktails and coffees from around the world. Following the end of the Virgin Australia partnership, Air New Zealand's new domestic co-chair deal commenced this week with Qantas. The deal sees each airline placing its code on each other's domestic flights within Australia and New Zealand. In Melbourne, Qantas has completed a major upgrade of its domestic lounges at Melbourne Airport, providing customers with more seats, an Asian spice bar and premium designs inspired by the Victorian landscape. The new domestic business lounge and Qantas Club have been completely redesigned to use space more effectively, offering seats for nearly 900 customers. More than 130 additional customers can now be accommodated, which is 40% more in the business lounge and 10% more in the Qantas Club. Last week, Qantas announced a multi-million dollar investment in a new first lounge and an expansion of its business lounge at Singapore's Changi Airport. This is in addition to upgrades to the airline's lounges in Tokyo, Auckland, Sydney, Brisbane, Hobart and Tamworth. Melbourne is a major hub for Qantas, with the airline operating up to 750 domestic and regional flights from Melbourne every week. Fort Worth in Texas is a popular spot for both business and leisure travellers. We find out what's hot, what's new and what's happening with Visit Fort Worth's Vice President, Mitch Whitten. 
Mitch, there's a lot going on in Fort Worth at the moment, isn't there? There is. We're growing like gangbusters. And James, it's great to have you back in Texas. Yeah, there's always so much going on here. We've said before, there's like a part of it about it being a hot and growing town is that everything's under construction. You know, James, if you want to experience Texas, you have to come through Fort Worth. And the Dallas-Fort Worth connection is the, really the Aussie's best gateway to experience all of Texas and the American South. So for the next year, U.S. vacation, going to be here two weeks, this is the best place to start. It's interesting, isn't it, because Aussies do come to the U.S. on average for two weeks at a time and visit all, you know, two plus states all the time. So if they can come through here and then go get off and turn right and, and exit and come and experience this place along with another state. Fort Worth is a fun and easy destination and really 2019 is shaping up to be a really big year. You've got great exhibitions like Balenciaga at the Kimball Art Museum, the Cowgirl Museum, one of our most unique, uh, reopens with a fabulous new second floor designed by an architect from Paris who worked on Versailles. Then you have next door to that Dickies Arena, a major new concert arena. Yeah. So, so much for the Aussie Traveler really opening up in 19. And Mitch Fort Worth is so close to AT&T Stadium, which is great for those who want to go and see a Cowboys game. A lot of travelers now recognize that Fort Worth is a great home base for anything you want to see in the Metroplex. You've got AT&T Stadium, just like DFW Airport, about 15, 20 minutes away. So if you want to go see a concert there or a Cowboy game, this is, your, this is an easy, fun place to, to put down. And if you look at what's on offer, you've got a great selection of hotels, but a lot more coming. We've had a lot for the value shopper, and we're excited about the explosion in four-star properties and boutique hotels. Just right here in the stockyards, we're having our first boutique hotel pop up here, the Hotel Drover, yeah. that'll open in early 2020. And it's going to be a really special Western experience. Even downtown alone, four new four-star hotels opening next year, including the 1929 Sinclair Building. Renovating this historic Art Deco building with high-tech will be a great combination. Mitch, as you said, we're here in the stockyards. If I haven't been to the stockyards before, what are the must-dos? You have to see the cattle drive. This is the only place in the world you can see a cattle drive by real cowboys and cowgirls twice a day, just before lunch or just before dinner, up and down this very street. Say hello to them, meet them, ask them how they manage the cattle. What was it like 150 years ago when that was the, that was the means of commerce yeah, here? Yeah. Then you need to go to the rodeo yourself. That uh, Friday and Saturday nights, go to Cowtown Coliseum. This was the first place that indoor rodeo took place and where they, uh, these Western traditions were brought inside. And it's a great entertainment venue, this yeah. 1908 building right here. You can't leave the stockyards without getting a cowboy hat or a pair of boots. And there's plenty of places to shop to do that. Well, I think I might go and do that right now. Thank you so much, Mitch. Let's do it. Great to see you. All right. More business class on your money. The Modern Art Museum in Fort Worth is one of the best art museums in America. Let's go inside and find out why. Well, Evie, we're here at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth, and this is one of my favorite galleries in America. If I had a couple of spare hours in the city, what should I do in here? Here at the Modern, there's uh, plenty of to see right now. We have currently an exhibition by Lori Simmons called Big Camera, Little Camera, and that's a photography exhibit. It's uh, its first time being shown uh, as an exhibit, and it's really something. A lot of people are coming to see it from out of state. Um, also, we have, throughout the next couple of months coming up, um, another focus artist, Crosby, from Nigeria, and we also have the Modern Lights, uh, going up right now for Christmas time. There's a cafe in our building, um, so there's plenty to do here and see. In addition to our permanent collection right now, we have um, a minimalist collection up in one of the galleries, as well as um, some pieces from you know, Morris Lewis, uh, Joan Mitchell, yeah. a lot going on right now. You've got a lot of prominent artists scattered throughout this uh, permanent collection, don't you? Sure. We do. Uh, every, anything from Warhol and Picasso to Rothko, um, Gerhard Richter, we have Anselm Kiefer, yeah. uh, a whole range of artists, international and American. And you're here at home in one of the best cultural and arts districts anywhere in America. Sure. Uh, this area in Fort Worth, the cultural district, is very walkable. Um, you're able to stop here at the Modern as well as visit a couple of different museums um, that each 
hold a different special uh, collection that's unique and unique to Fort Worth as well. Yeah, they are very different, aren't they, in terms of what each of them offers. And it's, it's certainly amazing in terms of how much you can see in a few, in a, just a few blocks. Sure. The modern is post-war and, you know, we have anything from 1945 to present day, while the Kimball Next Door is uh, ancient artwork and artwork, you know, from the early 19th century. Um, and then you have the Eamon Carter with American art. Yeah, I, Eamon Carter, I think, is a, a very unique space in its own right and some incredible art. So you look at those three alone, you do have th three of the best in America sitting right here in Fort Worth. Sure, right here and right in the same area. <laughs> Wonderful. And what have you got coming up next year? Have you got a few surprises coming up from some special exhibitions? Well, uh, we do have Disappearing California will be our next large exhibit after the Lori Simmons ends in January. Um, and that's different for us. It's a performance art based exhibit. So that'll be really interesting to see um, what that will be like. You're giving us more and more reasons to come back. It's one of those galleries where you, you have to keep coming back. Oh, sure. Things are changing here all the time, even uh, within our permanent collection. We have such a large collection that we make sure to rotate it. Um, every month or two, there's something new and different to see here that maybe you haven't seen before. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for showing us around today. Of course. Thank you for thank being you. here. The Omni Hotel in Fort Worth is one of my favorite business hotels in America. Let's check in now. Well, we're here at the Omni Hotel in Fort Worth, and one of my favorite hotels in Texas. Tell us about your favorite things about this hotel. Well, I love this hotel for many reasons. I've been here since opening, and uh, the great thing about this hotel, just like our brand, bringing in that local color and local flavor. So when you're in this hotel, you know you're in Fort Worth, right? We call this the living room of Fort Worth, actually, yeah. right here. Uh, all our stones are going to be from uh, different quarries here in Texas. Our artwork is all from Texas artists. And then we team up with different partners here in the community. So. Now, Letty's, which is a third generation boot and saddle maker, TX Whiskey, and then the Kimball Art Museum were just a few. Obviously, uh, Fort Worth, a very popular spot for Australian travelers and for business travelers as well. Yes, I'm glad to hear that. So, yes, we are. Uh, we do very well on the convention side during the week, and then on weekends we switch to that leisure crowd. So, the uh, great thing about downtown is you have the Sundance Square and all these different things for folks to go do. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, we definitely draw from an international crowd as well. Now, here in the hotel, you've got several bars and restaurants. Yes, we do. We have uh, seven different venues to choose from. Everything from uh, Whiskey and Rye, which, are, which is our local watering hole, to Bob's Steak and Chai House, which is our fine dining. And what are some of your favorite things about both of those places? Uh, two great establishments for us, so they both do very well. Uh, Bob's Steak and Chop House, you can't get a better steak in the state of Texas. Yep. Uh, phenomenal brand. Uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, our, our owner, Mr. Rowling, actually has both brands, the Omni brand and the Bob's brand. Right. And then after the night's over, you will have a cocktail and whiskey and rye, and so we have 100 different 80, 180 whiskeys. Yeah, that that's a lot of great, a lot of great um, whiskeys in there as well. I mean, how does one choose a whiskey? In there? You know, great question, right? It's all going to be personal preference, and our bartenders do a good job of matching up your your selection with yeah. our offerings. A lot of local beer here as well, which is obviously another very important aspect when you look at that local produce scenario. Great. We try and keep the local color. Uh, local color for us is big, and so we team up with several different uh, beer companies here uh, in the Fort Worth side and on the Dallas side as well. And look at, look at other partnerships you have as well. You've also got the Kimball Art Museum store here in the hotel. Yeah. Kimball Art Museum has been a great partner since day one. Uh, you know, we're known in Texas, especially in Fort Worth, the authentic Texas experience, but what we do are not known for is the Kimball side and the museum side. We have actually the third largest cultural district in the United States. So a lot of great draw from folks all over the country. And uh, if I was going to spend a few hours around the hotel in the area, have you got a couple of tips for me? You know, that's a great question. It all depends on your personal preference. For me, sports-wise, I'm going to do something active along the Trinity Trails and or something fun in the, in the uh, stockyards uh, and or you have Sundance Square as well. And uh, you've got some great sporting teams very close by here to the hotel, don't you? Dallas Cowboys are, are just a stone throw away, as are the Texas Rangers, um, and then we obviously have the Mavericks over in Dallas as well as the Stars. And the closest luxury hotel to Cowboy Stadium. That would be us, and we're very excited and very proud of that, and, and host uh, several teams throughout the year. Coming up after the break on business class from Fort Worth in Texas, we go inside a whiskey ranch and check into one of my favorite business hotels in America. We'll be back with more business class on your money. 
And now, more business class on your money. Fort Worth in Texas is home to the brilliant Firestone and Robertson Distilling Company. They've just moved to a brand new home called the Whiskey Ranch. Let's check it out. So your original whiskey is the blended whiskey, the TX, uh, which obviously you launched the, the company on. Yes. Um, has done very well in awards um, I've been reading about over the years. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, tell us about the whiskey. So the idea behind this particular style of whiskey was we wanted to create something that was extremely approachable. You know, a lot of whiskey only kind of fits a certain palate. We wanted to create something that uh, would be appealing to a wide audience of people uh, that was extremely flavorful, that could be drank on its own or used in mixology. Uh, so what we often hear from people is that the smoothness is off the charts. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably one of the main uh, reasons for you know, the, the uh, very high level of growth that we've experienced over the years. So how many cases did you start with originally? So we put out uh, 120 cases. Yeah. Um, it was our first order. And about six years ago, we were saying? six years yeah. ago. And then over the years, we're now approaching 100,000 cases. 100,000 cases from 120. Yeah. Obviously, when you produce something really great that's of a high quality, obviously the demand just comes. And, and, and whereabouts are you in the United States? You said you're in about 13 or so states now. We're in 13 states now, but that didn't really happen until probably our you know, end of our fourth year. So we spent most of those first, first four years in Texas yeah. building a following. Um, and really that's all we could handle at the time, just in terms of people and um, you know, growing the brand. And then we started to build our team and build our distribution, and now we're just trying to spread the word across yeah. the states. Well, we should give it a bit of a try. This is Absolutely. the so this is the whiskey. This is the this blended is the whiskey. whiskey. This is the original. So uh, on the on the mm. nose, you'll get hints of vanilla, caramel. Um, when you taste it, you know there's some uh, honey flavor. You know some uh, slight fruit notes. Beautiful. Not, not, uh, not, not too strong from an alcoholic um, taste perspective. I think some whiskeys can taste a little bit too alcoholic. This right. is really nice balance. So this is 82 proof, 41% uh, alcohol. Okay. Uh, so pretty mild alcohol content. Um, but as we hear from a lot of folks, they can say it can sneak up on you. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta take your time with it. No, it's really, in a lot of those notes you're saying, like the, the banana notes, the honey, the mm -hmm. really coming right through. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a uh, terrific whiskey, in our opinion. Um, I think uh, it appeals to a broad range of people. A lot of women who necessarily weren't whiskey drinkers yeah. are loving it as a kind of an introductory whiskey for them. Um, you know, we have, you know, staunch bourbon drinkers that have switched from, you know, brands that they've drank for years to this one. It's just an extremely versatile yeah. product. So how did you come up with wanting to do a whiskey? I mean, some people say they want to you know, create a, a craft beer or get into wine. You, you chose one of the more challenging yes, disciplines of liquor. Uh, we did, indeed, and, and it was really born out of the love for whiskey. Um, there's a level of romance in whiskey that I think you can't find in, in other things, and with the barrels and the yeah. natural materials and the wood, and, um, you know, say for uh, clear spirits, you know, it's hard to inflict a certain type of taste profile on that, but when we use barrels, you know, we can put our uh, yeah. finishing touches on it and you know, make it unique, and that was something that was really intriguing for us. So it would have been fun doing a lot of the uh, reconnaissance when you started going, we need to go and find grain from this place, we need barrels from this producer. You, it's, you kind of kind of gone around and kind of had a bit of a play and just picked the best of the best, really, haven't you? Indeed. Uh, it was a long road to get from an idea to, you know, making whiskey. Yeah. And you're exactly right. It, it's the grain. Where do the grains come yeah. from? It's the barrels. You know, what kind of char level, what kind of yeah. seasoning of the wood do we want? Uh, to the yeast that we use is very important. Um, all of those things take time to mm. investigate and ultimately uh, arrive at what you want want your product to taste like and that was uh, 
a ton of the fun part. Um, and then obviously, you know, the art of kind of um, the final process of the whiskey, which is, you know, every barrel ages differently. And so it's not like you can empty a barrel, you know, call it barrel one and barrel two, and yeah. it tastes the same. So the real art comes in, how do you mingle those barrels together yeah. to create a consistent taste profile? So. All of the, for all of those reasons, yeah. we absolutely love the whiskey business. And you said you've got a few more whiskeys coming soon, some more even smaller batch whiskeys, which is obviously even more of a fun challenge where you can get down to, say, 20 barrels versus the hundreds of barrels. Indeed. So uh, you've been to our first distillery, a much smaller distillery than where we're sitting today. And part of the fun in owning a distillery is that you can experiment. And over the years, we have experimented doing a rye whiskey. We're doing a single malt, an American single malt, if you will. We're playing around with aging it in new barrels versus used barrels. Okay. Um, you know, Irish-style whiskeys um, we're, we're playing around with. But, you know, our flagships are our blended whiskey and our straight bourbon for now. Yeah. But, um, the other products are not available in the market. We are often asked, when will they be ready? And it's the padded answer of, you know, they'll be ready when they're ready. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the challenge in the whiskey business. It's not, yeah. it's not a birthday that they become no. ready. It's, it's, you know, when you sample that barrel on some particular month and yeah. you say, this is the profile we want. So a lot of it comes down to science. And when you look at that scientific side of things, um, when you first planned out the bourbon, um, are you exactly happy with how it came out and is it how you thought it would at the start when you when you mapped that out and your little road to success? I'd say yes and no. Uh, did it uh, come out the way we thought it would? Yes, in the sense that you know we really wanted to create a weeded bourbon. Um, and what that means is you know bourbon by definition is predominantly corn. Um, what you can play with is what's called the flavor grain. And most bourbon, with a few exceptions, is made with rye as the flavor grain. So if the way we like to describe it is wheat versus rye. Think of it like bread. Yeah. You know, rye bread, a little spicier, a little harsher. Wheat is a little softer, a little sweeter. So we liked that taste profile, so we used soft red winter wheat for our flavor grain. Uh, so we knew that that was going to offer a certain taste profile. Yeah. The other big thing was um, we wanted to figure out, you know, a rule of thumb on the flavor of whiskey is 25% of flavor comes from the grain, 25% from the yeast, and 50% from the barrel. So those are kind of the constituents that you can yeah. play with. So grain is super important. So we actually, uh, we've partnered with a farmer directly who grows exclusively for us. Uh, we can you know, work with him on different varietals, you know, pesticides, all that stuff that yeah. we don't want in there. We can have that direct contact with him. So that's very important. The yeast is often kind of overlooked or, or not well known in how much it contributes to the flavor profile of yeah. the bourbon. We actually captured our own yeast from the wild, um, which came from a Texas pecan nut, oh, well, is okay. where it was living. Yeah. Um, and we do all the propagation of that yeast, and it created a, back to your original question, it created a profile that was just tremendous. Yeah, um, yeah. That you don't really find in a lot of bourbons out there, specifically with flavors of cinnamon and really dark fruit. And, um, there's not many experiences like this with whiskey anywhere in America, as far as I can think of. You know, there's varying degrees of distilleries and distillery experiences. You know, we had the benefit of building a new facility and taking a lot of what we learned over the years um, in what is it, what is our customer wanting um, and what do we want to project onto the customer. Yeah. And so, you know, there's distilleries that are just factory type setups. There's distilleries that are small and, you know, in one building. For us, it was about coming here, everything that you see should represent what this brand and what we as a company represent, what are our values. So, yeah. you know, from the detail into the wood and the reclaimed uh, materials that we use, that represents our desire to, you know, reclaim materials yeah. and you know showcase kind of the elements of Texas kind of a little bit of rustic and yeah. as I talked about earlier it's it's you know rugged and it's elegant at the same time yeah. um, so for all those reasons we think that this is a really unique place and you can't to your to your point uh, there isn't 
something that exists like this um, in the United States. Particularly, there's not a distillery that is on an 18 hole golf course. No, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on all the Thank success so much. far. Thank you for having Thank us. And let's try some of these cocktails. Yes. Well, that's it from us in Fort Worth. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Business Class from London.